we had talked about the downward translocation by the phloem. Now we had uh, talked about the tracheary elements being involved and the sieve tube elements and sieve cells being involved in the cases of both upward and downward movement. Now we have a proposition or a hypothesis that is known as mass flow hypothesis that we are going to study to understand the translocation of solutes. When I say mass flow or the pressure flow, you just have to keep in mind just like in your days of childhood, younger uh, days I would say, you must have uh, played that game where you uh, make the paper boat and that paper boat flows in the water flow automatically. In the same way, in the case of mass flow, a pressure flow has to be created. That means the fluid has to go in pressure from one place to another. And in that particular process of the pressure flow, the solutes would take the advantage and flow along with that flow. Are you getting my point? This is like you have a boat thrown into the flow of water and that boat is flowing on its own. There is no external requirement of some energy. Okay. Now, how this pressure flow is being created, there are two forces behind it. We have in detail studied about osmotic pressure and in detail about turgor pressure as well has been studied. So, the, it is the turgor pressure and the osmotic pressure which is responsible for bringing about a mass flow or a pressure flow in which the solutes would come and jump and take the advantage of that flow from the source to the sink. Now we have to see how that flow is being generated. So uh, we have this uh, hypothesis being proposed by Mr. Munch and we call it Munch mass flow hypothesis in around 1930s. He proposed this uh, particular uh, hypothesis where he concluded that it is the mass flow or the pressure flow that is being generated within the phloem sieve tubes that is responsible for creating a turgor pressure difference that mass flow is responsible for carrying the solutes along with it. Now we are going to see how this mass flow is being generated. First of all you have to keep in mind that by the act transport that means by utilization of ATP whatever is being produced inside the whatever uh, uh, photosynthates are being produced inside the source in the leaf cells they will be transported into the phloem actively all right this transport will be active transport that the solute particles and of course because we are dealing with the phloem transport we are talking about sucrose. So the sucrose particles they would enter inside the phloem actively and because this is little amount of fluid that is being present over here this would be a fluid only as you can make it out nothing would move in dry condition because cells are being involved the sieve tube cells are living so there would be content some sap inside it this saps becomes hypertonic when the solute particles that are of sucrose they enter inside the phloem sap actively okay by the use of ATP now because this has become high in osmotic concentration the water which is present in the adjacent xylem this is phloem and this is xylem the adjacent xylem water osmotically comes inside into the phloem now there is osmosis of water from the xylem which lies along with the phloem because the sucrose particles move actively into the phloem they increase the osmotic pressure as a result the osmosis come, happens and the water from xylem enters into the phloem it increases the turgor pressure over here in comparison to the turgor pressure which is present at the sink. We have taken into consideration root cells over here. Root is acting as a sink. Now, comparatively, this is the situation that there is lesser turgor. This is water, xylem, okay, and this is phloem. There is quite less turgor in this case, okay. 
Now, because the turgor is higher over here as compared to this place, there is a turgor pressure gradient and the sap rushes. There is a mass flow of sap towards the sink. Okay. At the sink, what happens is that because this is mass flow, the solute particles, they would also reach at the site of sink. Now, when at the site of sink, the solutes have reached, what happens is there is again an active transport utilizing ATP. The solute particles using the energy from ATP, they enter into the sink actively and what happens is because they have entered into sink actively the osmotic concentration over here reduces in comparison to the osmotic concentration inside the xylem. Now what happens water molecules again move outwards into the xylem they move back into the xylem and hence the solute particles they have been transported from the site of source to the sink. I am going to repeat it just to make you understand what has happened. First of all, there is formation of solute particles or you would say photosynthates inside the source. The source happens to be the leaf. Now these sucrose particles, they would be actively transported into the phloem. When there is active transport inside the phloem, what happens is the solution or the content of the phloem become osmotically active. When they become osmotically active, they are bound to take the water from adjacent xylem inside them. So osmosis occurs, water enters over here. Now as water enters over here, there is a turgor pressure that is being generated and that turgor is in gradient with the turgor pressure with the sink, which is in continuity. Both are connected by phloem. Now this water or you can say the phloem sap, it flows as a mass flow and along with that flow because of turgor pressure, the solute particles also reach to the sink. At the site of sink, when these particles they reach, they are again actively transported into the cells of the sink. Okay, the cells take up using the ATP, the solute particles that have arrived. When the solute particles are got rid by the phloem sap, what happens is the phloem sap again the phloem sap again becomes hypotonic and the adjacent xylem, which is in comparison hypertonic to the phloem takes up the water. So now here xylem is osmotically active, it takes up the water and in this way due to the flow, pressure flow being created by the turgor pressure that is generated due to active transport of phloem particles into the phloem, uh, not phloem particles, the photosynthates into the phloem and hence take up of water from xylem is responsible for mass flow and hence the translocation of solutes. So this is what takes place in the mass flow hypothesis. You need not to be worried about anything. One thing is simple that firstly these particles they entered actively. Once they entered activity actively, Osmotic took, osmosis took place. Osmosis enabled this particular fluid to create more turgor and flow downwards. And same would be the case when this particular site could act as sink and this particular site would act as source. So that uh, interchangeability of source and sink does occur in the case of translocation of solutes. It is not like as in the case of xylem. In the case of xylem, the flow is always unidirectional. That is why you must have observed over here that we do not talk how the water is flowing in the xylem. In any case, the water would be flowing like this in xylem, always. And we do not take that flow into account. That flow is of no use for us. Okay, only thing we have taken advantage of is that that water which is present in xylem can be taken up osmotically into the phloem and then phloem could create the mass flow and hence bring about the translocation. So this is all about one aspect of multicellularity in plants that how plants at the physiological level 
carry out their activities in which it involved the transport of solutes, it involved the water relations that a plant has inside the cell and as entirely we talk about the tissues, we had discussed about the process of photosynthesis and finally we pile up this particular aspect of multicellularity in plants by understanding how whatever is being formed inside the plants as a result of a very complex photosynthesis process is being translocated from one place to another.